Hey, everybody. Welcome to another Five Core Live. Super excited today to have a very, very special guest. I'm not even going to ruin it because he's so special and exciting. Um, we'll get him on here shortly. Oh, here he is. Let's bring him on in. Okay, how's everybody feeling out there? Welcome. Where we got people coming from? State where you're from. Hey, hey. hey. Nice to meet you, man. Good to meet you. Happy you Thursday. Some your stuff. You're an inspiring guy, bro. Cool, man. Appreciate it. Absolutely. So um, tell everybody who doesn't know you, most people probably do, because a lot of the self-help community, personal development, they tend to know who the big the big players are and you're definitely one of those tell us who you are and kind of give a little brief your journey how you got here and what you're currently doing i don't know what would you say what would what would your intro for Evan carmichael be i'd say this is a guy who basically is living exactly what i am trying to preach to all you people he seems to be wow. living the five core life um okay. you know not to not to put a twist on what we're doing with what you're doing, but there's the, the reason we're talking today is there's definitely synergy and that, you know, I'm constantly preaching these, these habits and the, and, and the way to live your life and how to do it and how it can elevate you from one level to the next. And you are the living embodiment of that. Wow. Well, that's better than what I could have said. So great. <laughs> <laughs> and great to be here, done. everybody. <laughs> Good to interview you. Yeah. Just cool. give us kind of a brief kind of like, you know, your journey, you know, and, and how you got, to where you are now and you know kind of your main purpose and thrust of what you're trying to do well i think people probably know me for either my books or my youtube channel talking about entrepreneurship i think your purpose comes from your pain i think whatever you struggle the most with uh as a human is the thing that you then want to serve the world through so i struggled a lot as an entrepreneur um you know when i was 19 it was my first business and uh didn't believe in myself didn't know what to do uh quit on my partner it was the worst day of my life and um, I just, once we got it through that, I realized I want to help other entrepreneurs not struggle as much as I did. So since then, that was 20 years ago, um, I've spent the past 20 years trying to help entrepreneurs believe in themselves more and not give up on their dreams. And so now, do you feel like you focus mainly on the business, financial, career side of it? Or do you feel like you kind of they all tie together and you cover different gamuts of it? What do you mean? Uh, in terms of like different areas of your life, like relationships, like we have, I have these five cores. I say, you know, these are all important cores to everybody. They're, they're important areas that you want to focus on. You don't want to neglect too many career and finances is one core. Um, but I also, we also have relationships, mindset, physical health, emotional health, and giving back. So does that all work into your system or do you mainly focus on the, the financial and career side of it? So what are the mistakes I made? earlier on my journey was I would look at my calendar and I would only plan business stuff. I would only put in my calendar, my meetings, my habits, my routines that would be career focused. And I realized that would lead to all of my personal stuff kind of getting trampled on. Um, and that's, I think a lot where a lot of entrepreneurs, the trap they fall into is that's what they do. They, they, they always put a priority in their business and not on the other areas of their life. Um, so over the past, I don't know, five years, it's been much more of what is the life that I want to live? And then that just becomes habits that you're executing on every day, right? That your actions map to the ambitions that you say that you want. So here are my habits that will lead to a successful life for me and putting the personal as well as the self care, as well as the business all into my calendar so that if I'm going to cancel on you know, Saturday is my day with my wife and I will plan some, I'll always plan something new to go to right now it's COVID. So we can't go to restaurants and stuff. So I'm planning, you know, we go to different uh, hike and some, uh, you know, we've got a lot of trails and parks here around my area. So still planning the day for me to cancel a Saturday on her, like Oprah has got to be calling or something like it's got to be a big deal. It's got to be the same level of saying I would cancel on you for this event because some giant thing happens, right? Um, so you are what you consistently do. And we tend to only, at least the entrepreneurs only focus on the business side and not the other areas of life. And so, yeah, I'm a big believer in setting your calendar to match the life that you want to have, which 
making a business is a big part of it, but definitely not the only thing. Well, that's a great answer, right? I couldn't have scripted it better. And that's, that's exactly, you know, when, when people look at successful people and how they got there, you're not going to find somebody maybe, and let's, well, you know, I'll, I'll be on the same page as you in the beginning, you know, and I, and I tell people, give yourself a break when you're starting a career or trying to become an entrepreneur or starting a new business. Sure. There's going to be a little bit more front loaded there and you're not going to be equally balancing every area of your life. Right. But the point is to when, you know, when you feel like, okay, now I've gotten a routine going, I'm headed in the right directions. I've built some momentum with my business, my career. Okay. Now what's happening with my relationships? What's happening with my physical health? What's happening with my emotional health? Am I doing the things like you just hit two cores in one? You said hiking with your, with your girl. Right. That's you're hitting your relationship core and your emotional health core. You're doing things that you're passionate and uh, about and, and incorporating that with somebody that you care about. And like you said, you you can make that commitment to yourself and you're not going to cancel it unless it's something humongous, because that's that's what most people do. They say, oh, it's not a big idea to just push something that I know I should probably be doing, spending time with my significant other, going on a hike, something I, I, I love. But then what happens is you push it off the next week and the next week. And then before you know it, it's been like six months, a year before you've done these things and you're degrading not only your emotional health, but your relationship as well. Yeah. And I think you can have a great plan, but then life's going to hit you in the face and you need to adjust your plan. Right. I mean, you could have a plan to say, okay, this, this six months, I'm going to focus just on my business and let everything else slide. But then your mom gets cancer, you know, or, you know, you have a heart attack or like something happens and then you have to adjust to it. Right. I had all sorts of plans for my business and then COVID hit and I'm not speaking anywhere. Right. So then, okay, adjust. It's, it's a constant adjustment. So I think what happens when you make a plan um, and, and I mean, I'm, I'm not as super deep into, into the five cores, but I think if you're making a, a, a plan for right now for what your five cores look like, uh, that won't be the exact same plan in a year or in two years, maybe two weeks. And so it's adjusting. It's the constant awareness that the plan that I made is for what I see my future being right now. But as I step into my future, it's going to have to adjust. The buckets may be the same, but it may not be the exact same activities that I'm doing in a year. And so it's okay. Like it's, it's people stick to a plan that then at some point doesn't serve them anymore. So it's being willing to jump off it to then create the new plan that does serve you. That, that's, a, that's a great point because, you know, Pivoting is such an integral part of being successful in any area of your life, right? Like you break your, you, you play basketball for your physical health and you break your leg. Like you can't just stop your physical activity, right? Right. Um, you know, you got to be able to have that flexibility and be able to pivot and say, okay, this isn't working and I've hit an obstacle. How am I going to get around it? Mm -hmm. And that ties into, for, for me, the mindset core of kind of having that attitude of like, no matter what happens, I'm going to be able to push through it and get around it and figure out a way versus what most people do, as I know you're probably aware, because you're in this industry, is they, they hit a big obstacle and they say, oh, okay, figured it wasn't going to work anyways. Next, you know, let's go back to whatever it was I was doing. And it's that small percentage of people like you and me that is able to push through that and say, no, there's something on the other side. And I'm going to make a commitment to myself no matter what to push through and get through. And then when you do get through, then the air is a lot, a lot less crowded on that other side. And there's not a lot as many people fighting. And, and ironically, it gets easier at a certain point. Yeah. So I think in, in the macro, those, those things will always be there. Like you'll always want to figure out good relationships and good family and good mindset and good business and all that. But then how you execute it is being flexible um, on, the, on the how but stubborn on the why. Let's talk about the how and the why. So tell okay. me your definition, how you look at that. So why is like, why are you doing this? Why, why is your health important to you? Well, cause you're going to die if you don't look after your health, right? You're not going to have a, a, a long life or a happy life. If you're neglecting your health constantly, you know, why, why is your business for the entrepreneurs out there important to you? Well, because you want to feel like you're doing something meaningful, that you're serving, that you're helping, that, that you're waking up every day and the work you do matters as opposed to going to work for somebody else and feeling like you're you know, wasting your talents. Um, you know, why is relationships important to you? Well, because you want, you want to feel connected and close and not just be by yourself your entire life and, and a hermit, right? Like everybody has 
different degrees, but everybody wants to be connected to, to somebody. Um, so, you know, the, the, in those cores, the why is something everybody can relate to. The how will be specific to the individual and also specific to this moment in time, right? So hiking for somebody watching might be the worst thing on the planet. They hate hiking. They get allergies. They're allergic to bees and like pollen and grass and they hate it. It's like the least romantic thing to do with their significant other, right? So don't necessarily take my how as, as the recipe. It's just the fact that you're spending dedicated time to this, one of your cores, you know, on a regular a basis. Right. Sorry to interrupt you. There's different ways to skin a cat and we each have, it, it's a system, right? The how you got to develop a system that works for you and that you can stick to and follow through with, right? Yeah. And that, I, I love that why you're talking about, so I'm sure you're familiar with Simon Sinek. Have you, have you seen yeah. his, his why YouTube video where he talks the about the why? Golden circle. Yeah, I mean, just for any, everybody watching that hasn't seen that, you know, it, it, the gist is it's so important to connect. That why is like that, that inner, just our inner soul basically that says once we've, it's activated, that's when we do things. It's what motivates us to do things. And if you aren't able to connect to your why on certain things, like you just said, um, you know, why am I working out? Well, if it's just because, oh, well, people say I should work out, but you don't really understand what it's going to do for you, how you're going to deep down, like you're going to get more energy. You're going to look better. You're going to feel better. Like if you're not connecting to that on a deeper level, it's going to make it much harder to stick to those commitments that you make to yourself. For sure. Right? Yeah, you could have a goal to to lose twenty pounds or you know whatever that is, but if it's not a deep, if it's just a number and you don't actually deeply resonate with it, you're not going to do it. You won't put in the work. As right. soon as it gets hard, you're going to quit. Right, because that that you know that other person on Photoshop who, you know, or on excuse me, social media that Photoshop twenty pounds off of her, right? just because they're doing it, and it's like, oh, I want to look like that. Like, right? It, it's and it's important for people to know that because it just. And, and we're in this Insta generation. You're getting a million things bombarded you from all directions. And the how, like you were saying, it's like you got to have that why and you got to be able to connect. And then you got to have to have some sort of a system in place, which I know that you help people with as well as, and I do as well, to be able to execute and say, okay, this is how you're going to do it. And you got to have that accountability factor. If you don't have accountability, it's all over it's because of this instant generation where we've got a million things coming out. How many times have, have people watching this, have you heard, read something or heard something maybe on this uh, us talking it'll motivate you and then two seconds later you know the next shiny thing's jiggling itself in front of you and you completely forgot about it so you have to have that system and accountability set up where you're screwed yeah and you know to that point i think um maybe i'm a little weird duck on this but i i think we're way better off than we used to be like i think i think i'd rather have too much information than not enough um the the you know, the cons are comparing yourself to somebody who's done, you know, a lot more or has a lot of natural stuff that you can't compete with. But the alternative used to be, I mean, so I'm 40. When I was growing up in 13 or 14 or whatever, there was no social media, obviously. Um, you just basically get what your parents gave you, you know, the mindset, right. the belief systems, the like, and they're on, you know, my parents are my wall behind me. That's me when I'm eight or nine years old and my parents okay. above me. So, you know, I was fortunate to have what I consider to be a really great upbringing. A lot of people don't. And I think people watching this, like they can learn about the five core life and you could be, you might be more of a parent than their own parents for them. Right. It's funny you say that there's this term I heard recently, it's called reparenting and I love it. And it's, it's becoming a popular phrase and it's kind of like, um, you know, restarting, rebuilding, whatever you want to re reprogramming. But it's like, we and I, what you just said is right on. And I tell people all the time, like we did grow up in a broken system. And if you were lucky and you got these like perfect parents that knew all these universal truths and taught you all the right things. And then you happen to go to a school where, you know, but the, the, the reality is, you know, it's a crapshoot who your parents are. And yeah, you're going to get some good stuff, but you're also going to get some bad stuff, what I call these failure habits. And then you're going to go to school and you're going to pick up some more failure habits and they're teaching you about the basics like math and English and science, which are important and we should learn those things. But what about life skills like setting goals and getting along with others and dealing with stress and, 
and emotional intelligence in these things, right? These are, these are badly lacking. And then you get into peers who the cool kids are the ones that do what they're not supposed to and are, are you know, going against the grain, uh, but not in a good way. And then you've got your, you know, get into the news and the media and you click on something these days and it just only shows you more of it. And it's polarizing us even more and more, right? So it's like, oh, these are the things this guy likes to see, but it's actually could be propaganda against the other side, whatever, you know, like, uh, there's, you know, the way I see, you know, whether you're Democrat or Republican, what, whatever it is, it's like, I think we can all agree the world's a little bit messed up right now. And it's not helping when you're just getting more and more ammunition on your side. And it's what it's doing is it's causing hate and prejudice towards the other side. So I'm Canadian. So we don't, uh, I'm not either Democrat or Republican. Um, but I think it's just, you know, be, being intentional about what you're consuming. So whatever you want, whatever you seek out, you can find. And that's both great and bad. If you're looking for hate or reasons why people suck or the other party sucks, or the other side, there's lots of that stuff out there too. Right. If you're looking for how do I grow my business? How do I get a growth mindset? How do I learn what the five core principles are? That's out there too, right? And so it's just being intentional with what are you going to be feeding your brain with? A lot of people default to entertainment and escapism and just right. trying to shut off their world uh, where I want to try to inspire people to go through education and learn how to make their life better because it's totally possible. Love it. So speaking of, let's talk about some of the education. Are, are there some, some main points that you want to share with the audience of things that you try to get across to people to help them to excel in their career and their finances? What I encourage people to do is find somebody who looks like you, um, not physically looks like you, but, but comes from the same, unless, unless you wanted to, but basically comes from the same environment. A lot of people use their story, their background as the reason why they can't. It's like, well, well, that's easy for you, Evan, but I can't because X. Great. Don't model me. Like there's somebody who came from the same part of town that you did with the same kind of parents you had with the same history of X, Y, Z that you've got. And they probably had it a lot worse than you and they went off and did this amazing thing. So if they can do it, why can't you? And just surrounding yourself with people who've, who've, who've done that gives you the hope that it's actually possible. Um, so that's like, that's step one. It's just a belief, belief that where you end up doesn't have to be where you started. Yeah, that's a great, right. That, that's a good one because it's like, we're all human beings and we're all born, you know, naked and afraid. And we naturally have certain strengths and certain weaknesses. I, always, I like to put weaknesses in quotes because people tend to, again, this broken system, it, it ends up, unfortunately, tends to, we focus on our weaknesses. And ironically, that's the exact opposite of what you want to focus on your strengths, those things that you're naturally good at, people tell you you're good at, you naturally excel. And the weaknesses you want to outsource, you want to find workarounds for, because there's no reason to have to have those in your life, right? Like you can part my, for instance, my last partner in my business, um, I'm not great with math and he's exceptional at it. And so I was able to find the yin to my yang in terms of our business relationship and, and not just that, but some other things to where he filled that void and I didn't have to spend you know, 10 hours to do something that took him 30 minutes, right? I focused yeah. on the things that I was good at. And that's something that I just want to preach from the heavens to people. You know, you got to right, focus on the things that you're good at. We all are born, we, we, we all have certain weaknesses. You, you can always work on some weaknesses if it's important to you and you want to, but, but don't try to fight up grain, you know, reduce the friction, focus on the good things and the things that you're passionate about and then set goals on those things. Yeah, the only thing I might add to that is I would say focus on what you want to be good at. You may not be good at it now. You didn't want to get good at math. You sucked at it, and you, and you didn't want to stop sucking at it. You know, you want to do other stuff. Right, it wasn't worth my time. I'm like, I don't need you to. You still want to. There's lots of things that I think if you're passionate about something, but you don't have the, you may not be naturally talented at it, you can still go off and win and crush hard if you're willing to put in the work. Um, I look at my YouTube, for example, it took me five years to get to 7,000 subscribers and then five years to go from 7,000 to 2 million. Uh, it was a lot of work. Go back on my content. I was not natural in front of the camera. I'm shy. I'm still an introvert. Um, I'm stumbling all over the place. Like I, I just, I sucked. I, you could look at that and say, there's no hope for this guy, <laughs> but I, I just liked it. I wasn't good at it. 
I you liked, I liked the it and I got better at it there. Right. The passion was there. The passion. That's a good point. Right. And I was, I, I want to make sure hundred percent agree with you. Like if you gotta have, it's gotta be both strengths and passions combined and weaknesses. Sure. If it's a weakness, but it's a passion and it's not something like I want to dunk a basketball when you're five, two, that's unrealistic. And it's something that absolutely you are hundred percent right. The law of compounding, you do it over and over. You practice, you get better and you end up like somebody like you. Yeah. Like, do you want to get better at it? Focus on the things that you want to get better at, that you, that you enjoy. The, like making videos for me, this is fun for me. Fun, Other people right. would come on here and say, this is torture. I would hate to come on and do Instagram lives with like be the death of me. Great. Like don't do it. If you don't have an interest in it, you don't want to get better at it, then don't do it. The people who win, and I've studied probably more successful people than most people and just the work that I do. The, the number one rule that they all have in common is that they loved the, the thing. They love doing the thing that yes, making money is important and winning is important, but it's not as important as like loving the actual craft that they're doing. Huge. Um, that allows you to push through those tough times a lot more when you love it. If you don't love it, it's so much harder to push through, right? For sure. So I, somebody just asked the question, how do you get started? How, how would you answer that question? Uh, I wouldn't judge myself on what the perfect first step is. I think that's the biggest problem. You're so worried about making the perfect first step that you just don't do anything. There's no great way to get started. Like you, you take a step. The people you. are trying to figure out, yeah, like, what do you want to do? I don't know what this person wants to do, but what do you want to do? What, what are your, you have some vague idea of what you want to create. Awesome. The most important step is just doing something today about it. Like how long have you been, people sit on their ideas is for weeks and months and years and decades sometimes and just don't do anything because they don't know what the perfect first step is and they push it till tomorrow like dummies with less intention and less of a good heart than you are winning off of yeah. your idea just because they started and they're doing something and that should be you and this, this is you know something i'm passionate about like i want to see people good people with a good heart who are trying to make an impact on the world and make a difference but who are just too afraid to get started um, I want to, I want to like, you have permission, go make, create, right. fail. Like you're built to serve. You want to help stop being selfish and get your message out there. Yes. Right. IG live with Angela. You, you hit it on the head. Just start, just get moving, get, take the action because here's what's going to, like we mentioned earlier at the top of this, this interview, you know, there's going to be obstacles. You're going to have to pivot and find your way to work around. Um, Failure is, it's not only, it's not something to avoid, it's mandatory. You're going to hit things where you're like, oh, I sucked at that. I, I, but if you go into it with that mindset of, okay, everything that happens bad, I need to learn from it. And that's how I'll become bigger, better, faster, stronger, and be able to grow. That's the best way because then you're like, okay, let me just start going. You know, you, I mean, you don't want to just start running around like a chicken with your head cut off. Have an idea, like I said, you know, and I always write, I recommend people write down their strengths, weaknesses, passions. Um, and then I like to have them actually even write down at your funeral, what do you want said? And I, I have them do it in their five cores, but you can do it just in general to kind of get an idea of where do you want to end up at the end, right? So that, that kind of just starts things at least. And then you go, okay, what action do I need to take today? And then you just kind of make a prioritized list. You set, you try to start setting your goals and your goals are going to change and things are going to pivot. You're, it's not going to be a straight line. That's just not how it works. Any successful people, Mark, I'm sure you can back me up on this. It, it, you're going to hit, you're going to go, oh, I thought it was going to go this way. And then you go this way. But it's like, can you get back on track is the key. Yeah, right? man. Well, it's crazy. Time flies when you're having fun, but appreciate it's, the sure insights and, and the opportunity to connect with your audience as well. Yeah, this is, I'm going to have to wear disguise. This Tom Cruise stuff. Too much comments on that. This this was a really great um, interview, man. I really appreciate your time, bro. You're doing great things. You want to tell us how we can find people can find you that are listening? Uh, if you want the books, just go to Amazon, easiest spot. Or if you want a signed copy, you can just get it off my website, which is evancarmichael.com. Um, and then otherwise, whatever social media platform you're hanging out on, I'm probably there. Just look me up, Evan Carmichael. Nice, man. Well, thanks so much. It was great having you on the show, and we'll talk soon, buddy. Cool. Thanks for the love, man. Okay. Yeah. Take care. See ya.